How's it going guys? Once again, thanks for visiting my channel. And once again, I'm reviewing some awesome Godox products here. And uh, where are the lights at? Today, no lights. And this is uh, Godox products, the uh, lighting company, right? But today I'm reviewing actually a monitor right here. And to what I heard, they also gonna be making several audio products. I really wanna see even they making uh, recorders. That would be kind of cool. But anyway, we're reviewing today the GM55 5.5 inch 4K monitor. And this thing is packed with features. Let's see what we get for $199. All so today we're gonna to be going through everything that this monitor has, every single feature and everything. So you don't need to go to another video to seek more information about the GM55. I'll do my very best here to what I can. And uh, just a disclaimer here, Godox has sent me this monitor to test it out and I do get to keep the monitor, but it doesn't alter the way my reviews are done and they don't get to preview anything. This video is not sponsored. I don't get paid to say or do anything here. I just upload the video on YouTube and that's pretty much it. Most of you guys already know this little few word monitors, which is flooding Amazon with these things here. And if you're used to these monitors here, this particular monitor here that Godox released is gonna make you just feel just like at home because it's almost the same thing. So every time I get this monitor and play with it, and then I switch to this one here, it's almost no difference as far as the uh, intuitive things, how the uh, monitors react and everything. So it's pretty much the same thing. So I'm gonna leave all the technical extra geeky stuff on the side of the screen here. So you're welcome to pause the video and read that anytime. But what I'm gonna tell you up front, this is a 450 nit monitor. So it's not mostly suitable for bright outdoor conditions, maybe some cloudy days. It's excellent for indoors, but if you actually wanna shoot something outside with a very strong sun, what I do sometimes, if I'm not on a gimbal or if I'm on a tripod or even standing, but the camera is like, I'm not really running or doing anything. What I do is, I actually put a black towel or cloth or something. So 450 nits is not the brightest monitor you should take outside, but the colors that come straight out of the box without doing anything compared to what I see on my iPhone or my uh, C200 right there is pretty damn close and you don't need to tweak almost anything here. And this monitor here also offers a 1000 to one contrast ratio, which is pretty nice for the blacks and everything. So right now, this monitor is currently sold for $199. And as you know, Amazon, the prices, they go up and down, you know, it changes all the time, but currently the, the actual price is $199. And for $199, this thing is packed with features that my uh, few world monitors they don't even have, such as the uh, camera control cable here. I actually shoot with Canon, I wish they sent me a cable that I can actually plug it in here and further demonstrate this but unfortunately I don't have that so when you open the box the first thing you're gonna see there is the monitor obviously but it does not come included with any Sony or any other NPF battery you have to buy your own and I highly recommend the uh, NPF 970 series which is the uh, bigger Sony uh, batteries if you have the original Sony that's even better because as you know they last forever they're not cheap but that's a heck of a battery now there are many other aftermarket Sony batteries to buy in the market there but make sure you don't go too cheap on it because usually they have bad sales so find a good aftermarket battery, spend the actual couple of bucks and you're gonna think yourself later. And inside the box here, there are two HDMI cables that they supply, the uh, HDMI micro and the HDMI mini, which my 1DX Mark III takes this particular cable here. It also comes with the uh, very nice uh, shade for the monitor. I'm gonna talk about this later. It also comes with the uh, clean cloth to keep your monitor clean. And these cables here, they're not too long or too short. You know, ideally I would prefer a foot and a half to uh, keep everything nice and tidy. But this one here apparently have to kind of a loop a little bit depending on the uh, setup that you do. But this is fine. So it's not too long or not too short. And it also comes with this little Allen wrench which pertains to this uh, cold mount shoe accessory here that you're gonna find on your box here. And uh, this item was sent to me from Godox all the way from Hong Kong, China to here. And uh, I can tell the box was uh, pretty open, right? But anyway, so the uh, the guy that was packing everything back in the box, somehow when I opened the box, where is the uh, monitor mount? So um, I don't know. The little bag came with this little wrench here, but <laughs> but there was no monitor mount. Which, by the way, this piece here is 90% identical to what you're gonna receive with this monitor here. And the only difference with this one here and the original Godox one is because you have the ability not only to adjust the uh, tension on the uh, 
tilt, you can also adjust the tension on the left and right position. So the original Godox, you can actually tilt the monitor up and down and also turn it sideways, which is pretty cool. Now again, with a few world monitors, this is the shade that comes with the unit. It's nothing that bad, but as you can see, it's like a flexible little flimsy little thing with a little Velcro thing on top here. And the shade that comes with this Godox monitor here, look at the difference. This whole thing is like a solid material here. So to open, you open it like this here, and this thing has a spring, check it out, like that. Pretty cool. So to fold it down, you just close like this. And to place it on a monitor here, you simply do this here. It takes one second to do. It's already mounted. And to open, you can actually leave it like this when you uh, put it away in your bag or your case, so you don't have to worry about the mortars being uh, scratched or something that falls on the uh, on the glass of the mortar there, which is pretty cool. So this thing is only like you know half an inch thick, so you just open like this, and it pops up like that. To fold it down, you just do this and that. Now to detach this mortar here, what I would recommend you to do is to uh, do it this way here, and then you want to slide your finger until it touches the actual monitor and then you hold the uh, monitor with the other hand here all you're gonna do is uh, press it up gently and the thing is out now this monitor here i actually leave this thing permanently attached while this one here i can easily remove in and out no problem and i even have the uh, touch screen monitor version over there on that camera over there that one is literally impossible to remove this one here is not that bad see it comes out but the other one, like I just leave it permanently attached because I don't know, once you put that thing on there, forget about it. So this one here, I can actually remove and put it back as many times as I want. The GM55 is a touch screen monitor, but some people, they rather not have the touch screen. Maybe they don't want fingerprints on the screen here. So that's not a problem. On the top of the monitor here, besides the uh, quarter to one uh, threads, you actually have the menu thing here, which turns this thing into a non-touch screen, but it doesn't disable the touch screen. You can actually go back to that at any time. So when you press this button here, you have your menus and everything. And to get out, you just uh, press this button right here, which is the uh, exit, and there you go. But you still have the touch screen, you don't have to shut down the monitor or, or re engage or re enable anything here. So it's like that. You can be a touch screen or a direct thing here with the, uh, the buttons, just like old school. Another thing that I love about this monitor here, just like with your cell phone, you, when you flip the phone, the image kind of flips, so you can actually customize this to do just that. So the image is like this here. So I'm going to flip the monitor here. And then again, there you go. This monitor also offers you 170 degrees of viewing angle. As you can see, even if you tilt the monitor all the way here, excuse my lighting here because it's shining a lot of light on the monitor. It makes it a little difficult to see. And again, this is a 450-nit monitor, but as you can see, you can see the image perfectly. I can see all the colors right here. So it doesn't matter if I'm looking at the thing straight or on the side like that. So somebody watching uh, something that you're filming there, he can perfectly see, he or she can perfectly see this way here. Except, of course, when you put the shade on because it's going to block here. But, you know, when you remove the shade, you can see pretty much in every angle here, up to 170 degrees. Another thing that I really love about this monitor here is the uh, shortcuts here from F1 to F6. The uh, few world monitors, none of them they have this feature here, at least not the ones that are on. So I have a touch screen here and I can actually have a little shortcut here from the uh, top buttons here. So the F1, you can cut, you can actually customize all this here, but in my case, I want the F1 to be the uh, focus assist, the F2 to have the uh, zebra going on, the F3, the video aspect, and then the markers here and everything. And then all the waveforms, you can actually tell the monitor to see only the vector scope or the waveform alone. So in my case, I want to see them all. And the last one will be the uh, little marker here in the center, which helps me uh, compose things better. Another thing, especially you guys filmmakers, that you want to do the uh, CinemaScope ultra wide screen. This monitor got you covered because I deliver a lot of work, especially if it is filmmaking. I don't deliver my work in 16 by 9 because that's not the uh, format of the video they want to deliver, right? So a few other monitors that I have used before, when you're shooting with the mat in the little lines, right? That, in, that tells you that you are on the uh, 2.35.1, for example. I don't like when I actually see the information outside the actual aspect ratio. And this 
monitor, got your cover. You have the option to have the uh, full transparency, whatever it's been cut on the top and the bottom. This monitor here, it's gonna black out all you're gonna see as far as composition. So you don't have to worry about if your stuff is off the frame because this monitor is gonna let you, it's gonna do a blackout uh, on the bars. So whatever you see through this monitor see, is the actual real thing that you're filming. So this monitor has everything that I want in here and more. And on the right side of the monitor, here is one more way to mount the monitor. And here's the power button that takes a few seconds. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seconds. Yes, it takes about nine seconds to power it on. And on the left side here, you have your HDMI in and your HDMI out and also a headphone jack here. But let me tell you something about this headphone jack because that blew me out of the water because, you know, all these monitors here, sure, they have the headphone jack, right? The, uh... But the thing is, that thing sounds so tinny that I can't really judge at all what kind of sound I'm, you know, you can't monitor anything. So this camera, the C200 that's filming this right now, of course, I'm just recording the scratch audio and the audio is being recorded here, right? With the uh, Tascam DR100 Mark III. And my shotgun is right there. But sometimes in some situations, you actually have real audio running through the camera. For example, the C200, C500, whatever camera you got that has XLR uh, inputs there. And most cameras, they only come with one single headphone out jack, right? So in an interview situation when nobody's moving, there's no chasing scenes or anything, everybody's sat down there on the uh, on, on, on set, right? So you can actually monitor your own audio if uh, that's the case, if you don't have a sound guy or whatever, if you're doing all by yourself. And then somebody else wants to listen to what the uh, talent is sounding like, you come here and plug his headphone or her headphone on this jack here, there you go. So she or he can listen to the sound while we can actually listen to the same sound. So this headphone jack here sounds amazing and I'm completely blown away and I'm not done yet with the headphone deal here, there's more. Actually, how loud this thing can get at the 100% volume because that thing is actually almost stupid loud which in a good sense because sometimes you can't hear almost anything. The uh, headphone out on a C100 Mark II, for example, is horrible, you can't hear anything you need the headphone amplifier between the camera and your headphone and things like that but this monitor over here especially that camera that has such a crappy audio uh, headphone jack out you can actually put the monitor there and actually listen to a much greater and louder sound so this monitor is gonna help you out in so many ways. And on the bottom of the monitor here, you have more ways to mount the monitor. And also you have your DC out and a DC in. On the uh, DC out, unfortunately, I'm shooting with the 1DX Mark III here, which has a massive battery, and those cameras, they don't accept dummy batteries. So I don't have a way to show you this. I was actually watching a uh, review on the uh, GM55 prior to this one here, and the other guy didn't have the opportunity to have this cable here, which by the way, this monitor is equipped with a camera control but he doesn't have the cable I don't know if this cable exists or whatever but I also don't have the cable here so I can't really show you in full detail about the cable the one thing that I know about it is that it has this camera control and also it features a latch here to secure the cable so when you have that cable plugged in don't forget to slide this so your cable can actually slide out and again I love the fact that this monitor has a battery uh, release latch over here so everything is secure the battery is not going anywhere and your cable is not going anywhere and over here is your SD slot, which allows you to import and export your LUTs. This monitor does not come built in with the uh, C-Log or S-Log, so you have to get your own LUT. And this will take, I think, I believe up to 25 LUTs, which is plenty of LUTs for most cases. Now, these actual mounts here, I really don't understand why they have the uh, two extra security little holes there and the actual adapter that's coming with your uh, Godox monitor here it doesn't feature those little pins that attach here so your monitor might swing left and right you know plus you don't want to over tighten this because again this is actually a plastic feature but I don't have a problem with plastic as long as it is uh, in good quality and most of these things they're made of ABS plastic and I don't mind plastic at all and also keeps the cost of the monitor down if I want metal you know, I'll buy metal and it's also uncomfortable to be touching metal things on a very cold day. So in my case here, when I attach this monitor on my camera, if I'm shooting something journalistic, for example, I'm going to actually supply power from the camera to the uh, DC in here and no battery and no metal case. So this thing is going to weight like a feather on my camera instead of having a metal monitor, which is another like, you know, 200 grams of weight. So 
to me, plastic is fine. I don't know about you, but you know, I don't mind about those things. All right, let's go inside the menu here. So just in case, if your unit comes shipped in Chinese, don't panic because where you're gonna find the language to change, right? Unless you know Chinese, like I do a little bit. And all you have to do is go all the way to the bottom here. And then Yu Yun, this is what this word means. And then there you go, fixed. Okay, so again, go here, here, and there. So let's begin here with the uh, focus assist. Turn it on. And then you have the uh, red, green, blue, yellow. Now the cool thing that I have not seen on any of my monitors is the intensity that you can actually do here. So right now, you're on a normal mode. You notice how this is gonna be intensified, like here and there. This can actually be very useful, let's say a recital, for example, or a musical, whatever that you're filming. Behind the curtains there, the theater is dark, right? Sometimes you see people walking on the uh, stage with the uh, curtains closed. And then you try to focus, pick a little bit of light that you see there, which is super hard. And then that's when you come here and intensify this to the maximum. So, because when you actually do the focus speaking, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on here. He is bright because the picture is bright. You know what I'm saying. And if you don't need the whole lot of that, you just make sure you are on the normal mode here. So this is actually very cool and very useful. Never seen this before on any other monitor that I have. Make sure to turn that off. Then next is false color. Turn this on. You have the mode one, which is the most uh, common one, and the mode two. So either mode, when you tap on the uh, right here, you have this little bar here that tells, for example, the uh, red is like super bright beyond the 255, right? and all the way to the pink here and turn it off now the zebra i've been doing this for decades i think it's so simplistic and so clean as long as you have the right ire here so you know this will be kind of wrong because the white this is only determining how much white is right so but don't make the mistakes like when you're shooting a bride's dress which is white you know you might make her face too dark you know this is you gotta get used to this stuff but I've been relying on Zebra for a long time. I do not need false color, and my exposure is 100% accurate just using the Zebra. I don't like false color. I don't. Now, the monochrome, you have the usual black and white here, the blue, the green, and the red. Next, pixel to pixel. This one here, I don't know what that is, even if I turn it on. All my monitors have this. If you guys know what that is, please uh, let me know in the comment section. I'd appreciate that. That's the only thing that I don't know, the pixel to pixel. Sorry. So the image flip here, you can actually uh, customize on the shortcuts here on top, the F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So here you can actually flip it horizontal, vertical, and auto. Every time you flip the monitor upside down, this thing is going to automatically flip it for you. So it's a, always a good idea to choose the auto. Now the zoom, you have the uh, X2. Let's, let me turn it on. X2, X4. And on these modes here, you cannot pinch and zoom. Don't worry about it. On the user mode, yes, you can. But make sure the menu is out. Otherwise, you can't do that. So let me exit this out here. And then you can actually not only zoom in and pinch or whatever, you can actually see where you are in the image here, which is great. So you don't guess anything. So camera control, I don't have that cable, unfortunately. I don't think they exist yet for this monitor, but uh, you, know, you can actually turn it on, turn it off here. This is as far as I can show you. Now the battery tip here, it's up to you to turn it on, to turn it off right here. Now next will be the video aspect, which is another great feature. You have the auto or 69 all the way to, uh, to the uh, 2.35.1. Even on Sony Vegas, Magic Vegas, to render this out as 2.35.1, the real canvas here, no fake black bars. All you have to do is set it to 1.333 and it will render exactly like this here, in which is the actual format that I deliver to my clients every time I'm shooting a material that it is actually movie related or any other commercial, even some music videos that I deliver. But if you are an editor, please do me a big favor. Do not fake the black bars because especially if your client has a uh, CinemaScope widescreen, what's going to happen is he's going to see black bars not only on top and the bottom, also the left and right. So the image is going to be a tiny little box there. 
on DaVinci or Premiere, for example, try to at least render this to 1980 by 818. This will be this actual format here that you can see here, right? So, but please don't fake those bars because that is the most amateur thing ever. So if you want to deliver something CinemaScope, please make it native, the 2.35.1. Thank you. Then we have the center marker here, either on or off. I also have a shortcut here. There you go, there it is. One thing that I really don't like here is because when you call the menu again, you have to hunt, you know, it's, you know, it's on the second tab here already. I have to look for, oh, where was I? Center marker. Oh, okay. So this has to change because every time you call this menu, this should be already highlighted as the last thing that you saw here. That will be perfect. Next will be the safety marker. Gotta turn it on. You have the 80%, 93%, 95%. Then the uh, marker mat. This is actually very, very useful for you guys that shoot uh, CinemaScope widescreen. So let's turn this on here. So you have the uh, 69, right, which is the, uh, the bar here. And then the 59 and whatnot, all the way down to 2.35.1. So let me quit them, the uh, menus here. And this is what it looks like here. Now, not only that, you can actually have, see, we got to go back here. And where was I? Uh, here. No, that's, uh, where was I? Right there. Okay. So not only you can actually have the proper canvas here, you can actually control the level of transparency here. When you are right here, you can, oh, there you go. You can actually see everything outside the area here but i don't like that so i always make sure i have no transparency at all so here a little bit of it and here you see everything i always like my transparency to nothing so when you're filming it doesn't get distracted here so all you actually have is this thing here and here you have your grid line however way you want to put it and on the marker color here, as long as you have the marker thing selected, right? Something on display here, so you go back here. And then you can select white, or select red, or green, blue, yellow, or nothing. Oh, cool, you have the nothing option here, good. Now let's go to the LUT. You can actually turn it on and select. There's no files. And this monitor does not have built-in any uh, C-log or S-log. So you have to come up with your own LUTs and then you can actually import everything using the uh, SD card here. So I don't have any LUTs here right now. And on the LUT here, you can actually import or export. It says load and please wait. You're gonna wait forever because there are no files. So you have to have your own LUTs on your SD card. Next we have the uh, waveform. So you can actually choose the vector scope, the histogram, the RGB, the, uh, you know, whatever you want to choose here, make sure that's on. So to see the vector scope here, whatever you want to set, you have to exit this menu and then there it shows up right here. And then you have to go back to the menu again and then go here, back to the waveform. Then you have the audio meter right here, which you can actually turn it on and turn it off, but you have to exit the menu in order to see what you just did here. So I have the vector scope here and the audio meter right there. Then if you're gonna do all waveforms, make sure that's on here. Then when you exit the menu, everything is in here. You can also customize the stuff on a shortcut here. So I see all my waveforms or none of them, you know, so pretty cool. Next will be the color space. And then you have the Rec 709 or the original, whatever your camera is seeing there. Brightness, I would not mess with this because any monitor, when you do this, it throws off completely the uh, balance of the picture. So if you need more brightness, you have to adjust the backlight, but never the brightness of this. Thing. So leave this stuff alone. Same thing with the contrast. You know, this helps you to film outside, but when you have the contrast at 100%, now you can't really judge your exposure because it gets a little wacky. So don't touch those. I wouldn't. It's up to you what you want to do. Saturation also don't touch it because, you know, why would this be uh, helpful for your filming? You know, the more accurate the image, the better. So usually they do a good job. Everything is in the middle range here. So the brightness, contrast, and saturation, don't touch this. Hue, maybe, and then I adjusted this to 45 to what I was uh, seeing on the uh, display. So that one helps. Now sharpness, I only have a little bit, and this is plenty enough for me. So... 
on a zero was a little bit too soft and in my case yes five is the the best for me color temperature 6500 9300 or the user so i don't know uh what i'm missing the monitor here i don't know if it is about something that i don't have to access this thing here so i'm gonna leave it at 6500 this is a brand new monitor i don't have all the accessories here but uh you know all i can tell you is that you cannot access this page here so only here there and there and this takes a little bit of a while to change as you can see maybe it's processing something there i don't know then you have the rgb which again uh as of right now i cannot uh change anything here so now we have the uh, customization this is also very cool the f1 for example you can choose the whole menu camera contrast all the stuff here and then you press the arrow there's more the grid line the zebra monochrome there's more you know everything here the uh, the canvas the aspect ratio everything so on the f1 i have it set to focus assist f2 i have set to zebra f3 i have set it to video aspect and f4 the uh, marker and f5 as the all waveforms and finally f6 as center mark so when you get out of this menu here you can see the uh, f1 is the uh, zebra the f2 is the this one here video aspect so everything is uh, very quickly done and then my uh, 2.32.1 ready to go regular widescreen that you know perfect and then all waveforms nothing and then the uh, center marketing there so that's the end of the menus here and i think for a monitor of this price you know just a buck 99 this thing is packed with features and the only complaint that i have here and uh, actually is a big one is the uh it's not the best touch screen monitor in the world sometimes you have to triple tap but you know it's mostly responsive most of the time it's responsive see i'm doing here everything is cool but sometimes like you know to quit see there you go now it works and you know you gotta tap it twice or something but when you are actually in the menu here everything works nice and fast so all your stuff here you can you know adjust and everything so here you can actually just turn stuff on turn stuff off no problem it's just quitting the menu that's like you know i have to tap like three times I don't know if this is a hardware thing or if it's a software thing so you know so let's go back to the menu here with an actual video now because it's still that's not what you guys are gonna be seeing on the monitor right so I want to show you guys an actual motion picture here it's actually something that I actually recorded on my studio here this is a very talented singer from the uh, Poconos Pennsylvania Ariel Delgado so if you want to hear her song she's on iTunes Spotify all that stuff so let's go back to the menu here just with the uh, with the stabs over here so let's go to the focus assist turn it on and then you have the uh, the red here so the way you see here let me pause this for a second here hold on a second here there so it looks like this there right and then you can actually intensify it see super cool this feature here next we have the uh, false color turn it on which will look like this this is the mode two and the mode one now the zebras turn it on So sometimes see, you see a little zebra on the headphone there. So that doesn't matter. What matters is her face, right? But uh, you know, I'm very used to zebra, so I'm pretty precise when it comes to this zebra stuff. I don't need false color at all. So let me turn this off here. Now back to the uh, the next thing here, monochrome. You have the uh, black. I've got to turn it on. Sorry. You have the black and white. This right here, there, there, and uh, pixel to pixel. I don't know what that does doesn't do anything uh, can somebody let me know what that is please and then the image flip i don't need that the zoom actually turn it on right so you have the uh, times two times four you can't pinch and zoom here only at user and then make sure the menu is out of here and then you actually go and then do your thing and this tells you where you are and that's what i wanted to show you with the actual uh, motion picture going on here so the actual colors here is pretty much on par to what I see on the back of my cameras like the 1DX Mark III or the C200. So uh, sometimes you might need a minor little adjustment here. So you got to go to the heel, minus set to uh, 45 to what I see eyeballing. It looks 
pretty much the same as the back of my camera. So the brightness of this monitor here is very acceptable, especially for indoors or cloudy days and everything, especially for a controlled environment such as studio and everything. To uh, make things a little better here, you have to go to the last setting here and then the backlight. Mine is at 100%, so this is what it looks like over here. So I think the default is at 80 but I leave it at 100. But don't change the stuff like, you know, the brightness and leave everything the way it is at 50, okay? Don't mess with the contrast, saturation. You just leave the stuff alone. So the heel here is something that you want to modify, but everything else, leave it alone. I would change at the uh, backlight. That's pretty much it. And here's the firmware upgrade. I'm assuming this is done through the SD card when they have a new release. So just so you know, you can actually upgrade the firmware. And then when you have the file, this thing is gonna update. I'm gonna hit cancel here. Now the headphone jack, I'm gonna show you guys something. So you click on volume here. So you go to the settings all the way on the bottom here, click volume, and then look how loud this thing is. That's crazy loud. So this is coming out of my headphones here. You can hear like a Bluetooth speaker almost, and it does not distort freaking awesome so here is plenty loud but this one here is stupid loud which is awesome i'm gonna show you how this will sound on the uh few word monitors here you see the difference i'm gonna show you here there's absolutely no comparison and by the way I don't know why the headphone is on the bottom of this monitor here. Yeah, it's loud enough, but it's acting like the uh, 35, 40% on the actual Godox monitor. And this sounds very teeny. All the bass information here is non-existent. Now the Godox monitor, the headphone jack is super loud and you hear the full range of your audio. So there's no comparison to this monitor here. At the end of the video, I'm gonna let you guys hear and watch this video here. So if you're interested, you know, this is Ariel Delgado. You can actually download her stuff at iTunes and Spotify. I'm gonna play this at the end of the review if you care to listen to. So right now, let's do some latency tests here. And I have both these monitors to show you guys. And the Godox is not one bit behind these monitors here. As you can see, the way I move my finger here. So each monitor is behaving the same exact way. So the latency here is almost negligible. So it's like about four frames. So in that perspective, this monitor is excellent. And so is this one here. So to me, I really like this monitor. It does everything that I want, especially when I'm filming something that requires prompt attention there. There's almost no delay. So it's only about four frames. So you can do pretty much everything you want with this monitor here for only like what, a buck 99. So I'm using an iPhone now to test this to see how this goes. So that's the end of my review here. Thank you so much for sticking around. And it's always a pleasure seeing you guys here. And if you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to drop them down in the uh, comment section. I'll respond to everything that I see there. Please subscribe for more content like this. And thank you very much. And i see you guys next time. Let it be you coming through to show me proof of what you would do. I was watching you, wondering what I can do. I didn't think I would be enough for you. You've been trying to worry about me, making sure that. Everything
nothing that I wanted more I give it my all, tipping the gold Since you all know my worth is what they just cannot afford You're a pretty little butterfly Ooh, I swear you caught my eye Come and spread your wings out wide Only way to fly is try I know this ain't easy But baby, believe me We grew from nothing And blossomed to something So don't you worry about it, baby Cause maybe you'll see I like the stylish clothes you wear I like playing in your hair I like the way you move It's the things you do I like everything when it comes to you Cause you're the one I wanted You show me how to flaunt it And I'm no make-believe So be something sure to me You've been trying to Do I like everything when it comes to I you?